Welcome to the car guys. This week it's Q&A time part two. Yeah, top 20 questions that came from you guys thought we would do this as a, an extra thing because it was so popular last time. We've gone through and distilled them down to uh, the very best and we thought we'd go through and answer 20 more car guys questions. Let's dive in shall we? Off we go. <laughs> Off we go. Off we go. What's first on the list? Okay, so first of the 20. Although these are not in any particular order. No, this is not no. like our most favorite question down to our least liked question. So mm. don't, you know. Don't um, read anything into this. No. First question, Cam Fraser Burns. Do you still have day jobs or purely shenanigans with cars? Shenanigans? Honestly, we how don't do, do you think we are? We don't do shenanigans, we make professional videos. I have a day job, I've got my own uh, IT consultancy business. It allows me a certain amount of times for shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, used to own a company and now I don't and uh, just uh, fanning about basically. Just, yeah. Just not doing much. Not doing anything, no. 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 Looking for the next big thing. John Weller asks, how do you guys meet? So we met, oh Christ, about 10 years ago, 10 years ago uh, on a friend's road trip down to Italy and we bonded over the Cannonball Run film, That's mostly, very, and very true. beer yeah. and cars. Yeah, we all, a big bunch of us drove cars down to Italy in a big sort of like Top Gear racy convoy thing with walkie talkies, but it was definitely the Cannonball Run that, uh, that sealed our that fate. sealed the deal. John Weller also asks, what do you think of Singer 911s? Well, you better go first. I love Singer 911s. I would, I would chop off various parts of my anatomy to get a Singer 911. I had a chance to, to get one, but I didn't. But I absolutely love them. They're obviously now super, super expensive, but the craftsmanship and the attention to detail and all those little retro touches and the stance of the cars just blows me away. So for me, I would, I would have one in a heartbeat. What about you? Yeah, so I think that they're more a piece of jewellery than they are Ooh. a driving machine. I Ooh. love the attention to detail. Ooh. I love what they've done with them. Uh, the design features, I think it's amazing. They do look incredible machines. I realise that Mr. Chris Harris, Sir Chris Harris, uh, <laughs> to be, <laughs> test drives them and develops all of their chassis for them. So they obviously clearly are driving machines, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not 100% convinced on the Singer thing. Wow. Unfortunately, I am 100% convinced. And obviously, if Singer, you're watching this, how about a go, eh? Hey, how about a go? Any collaborations with other YouTubers planned in the near future? Uh, nothing on the cards yet. No, I think there's a few we've reached out to. There's some guys that we definitely would love to do some things with. Uh, so we're massively respectful, for example, of Harry Metcalf, who does Harry's Garage. He's got uh, a similar sort of uh, background and level of humour and his age. Age. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. He's similarly old and his audience are very similarly, similarly old. old. Uh, so so he'd, he'd be a great one. We've uh, attempted to meet up with Sideways Sid about eight times since we met him at the Geneva Motor Show and failed miserably every single time. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, so there is stuff coming. Pudman83 Any watch content planned? What watches do you wear? I mean, well, they, what you've done there, you see, Pud Man, is you've Can touched on, worms. yeah, you've touched on that other other obsession that we've got other than cars. <sighs> the trouble with watches is, unlike cars, is they're very easy to store because mm. they're very small. Yeah, I'm currently uh, wearing an uh, Explorer Mark One today. Lovely, which is very nice. I have got a Grand Seiko uh, Snowflake just arrived from Japan. So it's a model I've been going Beautiful for, watch. Yeah, titanium, and it's one I've been after for a while, but this is a, it's a bit more subtle, it's a bit less known than a lot of the other sort yeah. of Rolexes and things that we tend to wear. And I think we probably will be making some watch-only content fairly shortly. Probably not necessarily diluting this channel, really. No, no, it'd probably be a something completely new channel, yeah. just for watches. Yeah, so look out for that. AICB1, why no Astons? Mm, never say never. The trouble is, the issue I have with the Astons is that the platform, up until the recent kind of Mercedes breed of mm -hmm, Astons, mm -hmm. had been around for almost 
77 years. <laughs> they certainly weren't to my tastes anyway. I've had an Aston in the past, so I had a V8 Vantage. Loved it, loved the noise, loved the size, loved the looks, and it was a very classy machine. But my God, the parts maintenance servicing was crippling for that car. None of the others, if I'm being honest, have, have grabbed me that much. No. So maybe the new DBS, the Superleggera, we haven't gone in that yet. Ben Roachford, 91. Hi, Ben. He asks, if you could only own one brand of car for the rest of your life, which one would it be? I mean, I've got to say Ferrari, haven't I, really? Because I've got so many Ooh, of them. Oh, that's, that's all right. I didn't think you were going there. Well, it is a toss-up between that and what I thought was going to be the one that you would go for. So What, Ford? No, not Ford. <laughs> No, not, not Ford. Not Ford, no. 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 Is, is it Ford? Citroen? Is it Ford? Citroen, surely. It's not Citroen. It's n the answer is never Citro <laughs> Citroen. Immediately I'd say Porsche. You could have everything out of it, couldn't you? You could have big SUV, you can have your sports car, you can have your super sports car. Yeah. There's pretty much, you could pick from that, you could be very, very happy for the rest of your life in that. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. what about Ferrari though? So Ferrari, you've got the four-seater in the GT, for Lusso. Enormous thing. Yeah. And there is that rumour that the SV, SUV is coming. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably, I'd have to say, probably have to say Ferrari out of loyalty, but I mean, to be honest, Porsche is, is always going to be. From a practical point of view, it's, it's it? the better bet. Always mm. the better bet. So if you want to lend us any cars, Porsche, you know, we're here. We're cool with that. Yeah, we're absolutely. No problem. Down with it. Anytime you're ready. Mm. The phone's, the phone's on the hook. Just literally. Just yeah, phone just when you love it. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Was that the phone? Favourite car for long road trips? Well, I just did one of those. It's going to have to be the RS6 oh, for you, just, isn't it? It's just amazing. If I'm on my own, mm -hmm. if it's just us two doing it, mm -hmm. 911 Touring. Ready for a long journey? I think it'll be all right. Noisy, French motorways, it'll be all right. Oh, blimey. Even I wouldn't say the, the really? GT3 Touring for a long trip. I mean, mine. It says Touring on the badge, but believe me, there's <laughs> nothing Touring about that car. Probably for me, it's going to be a BMW 750 or the... Oh, Luxo Barge. Nice. Yes. Yeah, or work. the standard 458 Italia Ferrari, which Ooh. is very comfortable. Long journeys. Matt Hearn. Matt Hearn, spelled M-A-77. Like mm. what you're doing. Shall I drop out of college so that I can play more Fortnite? Yes. No. Oh, no, sorry. No, definitely no. do not do that. Stay no. in college and play Fortnite in college. Yeah, I'll do anything except playing Fortnite as Fortnite is a fruitless exercise. It will gain you nothing in life. Matt Brown 1 and Horton Patrick 22 both asked, who are your favorite car YouTubers? Can open worms literally <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> This has changed quite a bit over the, the past year, actually, because there's lots of people that we used to follow and were avid followers of, but now not well, so much. Well, kind of it's grown, hasn't it? The, the, the guys out there that are doing it have grown, and we've discovered more people yeah. as we've been doing this as well. So they're kind of obscure people that we never knew about. Sam from Seen Through Glass is one of the few people who his persona on the screen is identical to his persona off camera. I like Salamandrine because I like that He's massively over the top in most of the things, and I quite like that. Yeah. It's good entertainment, so that's quite cool. Savage Geese is definitely worth a watch. I think Nick Murray is definitely worth a watch. Paul Wallace, Supercars of London, his enthusiasm is, is, is oh, infectious. Oh, he's a top bloke as well. Yeah. Tap Bells, Emma Walsh, I think they're doing some really cool stuff. Yeah, definitely uh, worth a watch. watching videos. Yeah. So it's nice to see it kind of spread out a little bit more, and not just a bunch of blokes, hairy ass blokes sitting around drinking engine oil. I love a bit of Jay Leno's garage, obviously. Obviously. For sheer quality, probably Mr. JWW, you know, does fantastic stuff and has a lot of enthusiasm as well. And of course, we've got to mention Tim uh, Shmi 150. Yes, the daddy of them all, I mean, almost. The That's output, what got us into it in the first place, right? The work ethic, the output of that guy is staggering. His ability to um, memorize stats and then just relay them as you walk around the cars is, uh, is scary. Brad SB, thoughts on the Monza SP1 stroke SP2? Well, I like the SP2 because it's a two seater, so it's mm. a bit more practical. It's, they're based on the 812 Superfast. They're ridiculously limited to something like 100 six. units. <laughs> Not six. 
You might, as well, might as well be six. <laughs> might as well be. Might as well be one. All the chances frankly. of me getting one. Oh, um, awkward. Awkward. Apple Kiwi. Yeah. Thoughts on the 991 Speedster. Lots of thoughts. Positive thoughts. Please, can I have one? Thoughts. He wants one. Mm. I'm just, I'm just wondering how many runoff models we can possibly get out of that body shape. At if least, I'm at least twenty more. You twisted my arm and said I had to have one. Then obviously mm, I would. Clearly. However, I would probably take a late fifties Speedster, the original. Yeah. Every day of the week. Hugo Willett says, uh, pick one car to go round the world in. Well, so this is obviously led from Sam's. You know, round Same. the world trip. Yep. I wouldn't have gone for the T though, if it were me. No. I would go proper practicality. Probably a Range Rover or no, uh, Land Cruiser Amazon, one of those dirty, grapey things with a snorkel on it. For me, probably I would go for a Safari Spec 911. So full on Matt oh, Farah. Matt Farah Spec. Yeah. Lovely. So raised Not up. Not in pink though. No. Chunky no. wheels, lights on it. So I'd probably go for one of those or maybe. Jacked up Rolls Royce Phantom <laughs> with a snorkel. <laughs> BGS underscore images. Do you miss the Lambo Performante yet? No. Yes. Barry underscore supercars writes, what do you think of South Africa? I love South Africa. Been on safari there and obviously been to Cape Town and Joburg. Lovely country, definitely want to go back. Yeah, I've never been, unfortunately, but it will be a destination of in the future, most definitely. So a few friends that live there and everyone tells me how amazing it is. Alex Gibbs One asks, a uh, car below 30 grand most likely to appreciate? Well, I think at that kind of budget, you're looking at classic hot hatches. Mm -hmm. So two or five GTI 1.9. Renault Clio Williams. Renault Clio Williams. Um, Clio V6. But you need to go back in time. And probably the simple answer is, is if we knew that, then we'd already have it. Yes. So Henry Agas, underscore Agas, asks, what future cars are you most looking forward to? I'm quite looking forward to the Mission E. Wow. Or Taycan. Ty Taycan. Ty Taycan. I just... I'm curious about it. I think that the whole battery technology thing is not necessarily bad. Mm. Um, it's not necessarily good either, but it'd be interesting to see what they're like. I'm looking forward to the Porsche 935, the track day special and the wow. inevitable road version of it that will be coming. Ooh. I'm quite interested in seeing the McLaren Speedtail. I'd like to see it in the flesh. Yeah, because frankly, it's a bit Jetsons, isn't it? <laughs> I would like to see that. I'm interested to see the uh, McLaren 720 LT. Boxster Spider, which is due next year. Oh, that's going to be amazing. Very much want to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the 992. The new Lancia Delta Integrale recreation. Yeah. That one. Snip17 asks, what do you think of Pagani and Koenigsegg? I think we kind of, we might have covered this in the last Q&A. Pagani is another jewel. Mm. Um, the attention to detail is just incredible. And Koenigsegg, that Agera, that blue carbon Agera. Yeah, Rigera, wasn't Rigera, it? Rigera, yeah. was it? Yeah. That was at the Geneva Motor Show was just stunning. Yeah, and if you were going to sort of, if you were going to say, can you, which one would you have out of it? I would always take a Pagani over a Koenigsegg. Koenigsegg's Ooh. probably, it's just a bit too Swedish. outlandish for me. No, no, I love Swedish stuff. I love meatballs. Denton Robert, aka Robert Denton, asks, what will be the next car to enter the collection? Well, well uh, we just picked up an Integra. Integra's just arrived, this, you know, it's hot off the press. I would imagine, unless something crazy happens, like unless, for example, I go to the auction where they're selling all that JK from Jamiroquai cars, in which case... Definitely you know, something else. <laughs> definitely something else. But probably, other than that, it's going to be the Pista, I would think. Ooh, Pista. I think the 488 Pista will be the next one. This is the last question. This is the last question? This is the Blimey. last question. We've got three. It's, it's, gone, it's gone so quickly. Uh, Taylor Mark Ostwick. Best supercar to invest in for under 100k. Mm, wow. That's, that's, a, that's a tall order. Yeah. I would say... You're not going to go too wrong buying a manual 360 Modena Ferrari. Yeah. I think, I think you know, that the, the design, as ugly as it was and hideous when it first came out, 
actually now actually looks it's quite, too quite bad. nice and the manual version is obviously rarer uh 996 gt3 yeah that's a fairly safe bet yeah that's, i think that I've, I've, had one, I've had one of those and it was an absolutely epic car first generation manual audi r8 might be worth a look maybe the last generation v12 vantage aston martins with the manual dogleg gearbox thanks for watching the video guys hope you enjoyed this second installment of q a from the car guys don't forget to leave comments below which obviously will then create another q a and most importantly, please subscribe to the channel. The more subscribers we get, the more impetus we do have for creating these great videos.